Previously on the Embracing the Journey podcast. What's it like being a first per- the first person in your family to be going to college? What does that mean to you? A college student, psh, that was never going to be me. I thought I was going to be working two, three jobs like my mom. I'm the first one to do it. I'm the first one to go through this journey so that it can be easier for everybody after me. I was 10 years old and it was like, okay, it's time for you to step up and like play second mom. So, you know, at 10 years, at 10 years old, old, I think I forget about myself sometimes. (laughs) And and how does it feel to have it be about you today? It's special. You know, like I said, I think feeling in the center of attention can be (laughs) can be really nice. Hey, everybody. My name is Norris Frederick, and I'm going to welcome you guys to the Embracing the Journey podcast. Today, we are live from the American Licorice Company in Laporte, Indiana. Five years ago, I got to sit down with a group of, with a group of kids, and I got to learn about their life and things that they were, had going on and things that they wanted to do here in the future. And I'm back five years later, meeting with some of the, the same kids that are now young adults. This lady that I'm gonna introduce, not only is she an Ivy League grad, not only is she the first person in her family to go to college, but all around is a remarkable young woman. I want to introduce everybody to Sonia. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Thank you for coming. So did I overhear you say you drove from Columbia Columbia, New York, right? Yes. (laughs) All the way to Indiana? Yes. There's a lot that we got to talk about. (laughs) And I want to know what that was like first. It was a long ride, um, but I first had to like pack everything in my dorm. And I had been there for, you know, the last four years. I had kept everything in storage in between like the summers. Yeah. Um, So I I realized that I have a lot of stuff, um, but I had to get it home somehow. So... Uh, it was bittersweet leaving campus. I was packing, you know, saying bye to my friends. I didn't get to see everyone just because it was such a rushed process. Yeah. Um, but then, um, yeah, my family came for uh, commencement and graduation and um, they helped me pack everything. And then we started driving and we like took a few breaks along the way. And then we got here at like midnight or so. <laughs> yeah. So Columbia, Ivy League, did you ever think that that would be a place where you would be? No, I didn't even know, like, what colleges existed wow. or, like, that. I didn't even know that Columbia was Ivy League until I actually applied. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> was it a challenge academically? Oh, yeah. It was It was so hard the first, the first year, especially, because you realize how much, um, how much your high school has prepared you or how much they have not prepared you in comparison to your classmates. Sure. Um, so it was, it was a lot to go through, and I took like too many classes just because I was so like, I was like, okay, I need to like keep being a go-getter. And then, um, yeah, it was, it was really hard, but over time, uh, I got used to it. Yeah. Um, I learned like, you know, how to ask like the tutors for help or like how to go to the help rooms. Uh, and by the end of it, um, it was like, it got much better. <laughs> I love that. I love that a lot. Um, five years ago, you and I had a a real heartfelt, interesting conversation. And you were dealing with some people um, that when they would look at you, they would assume certain things about you. Some may have said some negative things about you. Some may have made you feel bad. And I want to share something with you, if you got the time. Of course. Do you think that you were ever a victim of being being bullied? I think sometimes when people don't know you, um, they tend to judge a book by its cover. Yeah. And I wouldn't expect anyone to do that without knowing who I am or what yeah. I do. Do you remember that? Yes, yeah. How did you feel rewatching it five years later? Uh, it's a... I wouldn't really say refreshing, but it's like humbling to know that like, you know, you might have, uh, you might have had a lot of people assume something about you, but despite all of those assumptions or people's expectations, um, whether they were good expectations or bad expectations, you like, like his, you've survived for five years and like you're doing fine, right? Like you're still alive. Fine. Yeah. Fine is, is making it to class. You know, fine is 
getting your homework done on time. Yeah. You're not fine. You went to an Ivy League university and graduated. Let's try that sentence over again. You're right. I'm doing great. And I met a lot of great people who have like, you know, supported me and have encouraged me and have given me like, like, you know, all the respect. Um, And I've met really like great friends who uh, countered everything that has been said in the past. I remember sitting down and you had this light about you that assured me that everything was going to be okay. And seeing you here five years later, graduating from college, first person in your family to do so, lived, you know, away from home for the first time in your life. And you still have this like really mature and like wholesome like energy about you when you you know growing up as a kid right like you hear about the harvards you hear about the yales you you hear about the columbias and the browns and you know things like that and you got to experience that firsthand despite everything that you had to go through to get to where you are when was the last time and be honest When was the last time you looked in the mirror and told yourself that you're proud of you? That's a really great question. (laughs) Um, I think like even uh, now that you've graduated college, right? The expectation is that you, okay, you need to like go find a job. That was a really stressful process for me because like it's really hard to find a job and you have to go through a lot of like interviews and like there's so many steps in between that like fly you out, you like meet people and then they'll end up saying no. Um, So it can be challenging. You, You know, you think to yourself like, oh, I've gone through all this, but like, yeah, I still can't get a job. And that can be really stressful. Um, But I think once I, like, after like the third or fourth, like, you know, really long interview process that I went through, I was like, okay, you know what? This doesn't matter. Um, It doesn't matter like where I end up. It doesn't matter if I have a job right away. Um, Like, I'll just like ride along with it. And at that point, um, I was like, that was like, moment of reflection for me because I was like okay I have done everything that I like can and I have done like so many great things up until this point and I think at that point that was when um maybe like my demeanor changed or like the way I think about myself changed and like a few days after I had like a few more interviews and like those worked out and I was like oh okay it wasn't that bad but I think it was um like up until the point where I was like where I could admit to myself that like despite the fact that I couldn't get a job I was proud of myself up until that point. It was like very difficult, but right. yeah. Um, I acknowledge what you're saying and I hear what you're saying. I would like to challenge you to look at things from a different vantage point. You're not getting the jobs that aren't meant for you to have, right? You're graduating with a, with a BA as a mechanical engineer. There's prestige And that title from anywhere, like if you go to any university, the simple fact that you've gone to an Ivy League, there is an employer out there waiting, not for anybody, but just for you, right? So everything that you're up against right now and, you know, going to these individuals and doing these interviews and that's not them telling you no. That's just you getting experience under your belt to get in front of the individual that needs you and wants you and knows your value for you to be comfortable to have that kind of conversation. And I'm a firm believer in that. And even looking at you now, like how old are you? 22. 22. You, your energy doesn't forecast 22. (laughs) And, and I say that in the most respectful way. I, I feel like knowing you five years ago, And then revisiting you here today, I can see the growth. I can hear the growth in the tone of your voice and how you speak and you're just your overall demeanor. And I feel like you coming back home for the time being is going to be a way for you to hit the reset button, go out there, rejuvenate it, and get the things that you want out of life. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Are you in need of digital content for your business? Family portraits for the holidays? videos and photos for your social media, 
Frederick Films provides a plethora of digital marketing services that can push your brand or business forward. Visit frederickfilms.com to learn more. That's F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C-K, F-I-L-M-S.com to learn more. Welcome back to Embracing the Journey podcast. So what was it like moving away from home for the first time? By yourself, no one's waking you up to go to school, no one's checking on your work. What was that like? It was scary. Um, my first week actually was spent uh, camping with a random group of people because we had this like pre-orientation um, opportunity that you could uh, choose to participate in. And it was my first time hiking. It was like in like upstate New York. Um, and it was like a bunch of you know people you've never met. And during those hikes, it was like five days. You're out in the woods um, with just like these like eight or so individuals, uh, you have to be, like, I had to learn to be vulnerable right away. Like, they expected you to, you know, share your story right away. Like, tell us, like, you know, give us the deep, dark secrets. And that was, uh, like, because they were interested in being friends. Yeah. Yeah, and that was one of the scariest things is, like, you had to open up right away, um, or at least that's what it felt like. I'm like, I don't even know you guys. Um, like, how can I, you know, like trust you in my sleep when I'm like hiking? Uh, but that's how like learning to make friends right away really helped. Um, yeah. And I know like my family was worried the whole time. I couldn't like have my phone on me, but it was really like a, the whole experience taught me to kind of live in the moment. Um, and, you know, don't worry, don't worry too much about what's happening back home or what is waiting for you on campus. For sure. Yeah, and then one, once I got to campus, um, they started with the orientation uh, programs right away, and it, like, sweeps you away. And for the first few weeks, it's actually not that bad because there's so much going on. But a little while, like, a little bit into the semester, when the actual, like, homework starts kicking in, the, mid- the midterms, the exams, that's when you, s- may, like, I started to feel homesick and I was like, this is like way too hard. I don't even know if I can do this. Like what, you know, what should I do? Um, But yeah, learning to kind of share this struggle (laughs) with my Mm -hmm. classmates and even like my, my parents, I would like call them or FaceTime them and say, Hey, I'm like really having a hard time right now. Like, what should I do? And they, you know, they always support me. Um, But yeah, it was rough and learning to like wake up in the morning. um, I had to like, you know, go out of my way to purchase this like really loud like analog alarm clock. Um, but I think like looking at it now, it's like like it had to be done. I right. don't know. I don't know how else I would have learned to live <laughs> on my own. Well, I can imagine. Are you an only child? No, I have a younger brother. How young? He is graduating high school. So what's next for him? So he'll be going off to Purdue um, to study biology. He'll be going through a very similar process. (laughs) Who do you think he looked up to during this whole process? It's hard to say, you know, like it's hard to admit, like maybe it was me. At first he wanted to do um, biology, but now he's like, oh, now I want to do mechanical engineering. I'm talking in the sense of like, you just said that you didn't know anything about college, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. He's going to college now. Yeah. Because why? He saw his older sister do it. Maybe. And made it, <laughs> and, but now it's possible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you take pride in that? I'm glad. Like, I'm happy it happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm glad that I'm able to help him so he doesn't have to, like, go through it alone or go through it first. So you being the first person in your family to go to, to college... What did parent parental support look like? What did that look like? Even though it might have looked different for other people where, you know, my parents couldn't really answer the questions that I had, but it was um, their job was connecting me with the resources like that they had, uh, helping me look online. Um, if I say like, oh, I need to like go meet with this person or I need to go to this event to prepare um like driving me there and allowing me to participate in these programs that would teach me more about college or what it's like. Um, that was kind of what it meant. And oftentimes it meant like I had to kind of experience it alone. And then I would come back and like share it with like my parents and tell them like, oh, this is how it goes or with my brother. Um, 
but yeah for, I know for other people it looks very different because they'll get help in like filling out applications or FAFSA and for me it was like I need to go learn how to do it myself first and then I need to come back and teach them but they're very open to that and supportive yeah. when you look at yourself and everything that you've accomplished do you give yourself the proper credit that you put this hard work in, you made these sacrifices, you got the the resources behind you and the help behind you to go from high school to be the first person in your family to go to college. Do you feel like you've given yourself enough credit? I think so. It was it was a whole village, you know. It took a whole village to get me to where I am today. Um, but I do acknowledge that, like. Maybe if I hadn't tried as hard or if I hadn't like shown as much interest, it might have not happened. So I was inspired by a lot of people and I was encouraged by a lot of people and helped by so many people. So, you know, it's not just me. I just kind of like went along for the ride. Yeah. That response highlights the fact that you are selfless and as much as one in your position would love to take all the credit, you're constantly uplifting the people that have helped you. Or in my experience, not letting the light on you shine as bright as it could, but also saying like, my experiences may have been different than others. That's a very mature way to go about that. Your youngest brother, your younger brother, is looking at his older sister move mountains. And I say that in a sense that there are thousands, hundreds of thousands maybe, hundreds of thousands of people that apply to colleges all over the world at any given time throughout the year. And you have managed to go to one of the most prestigious universities on the face of this planet and graduate and you've taken the time out of your day to come back to a project that was a part of your life five years ago to share your experiences and the things that you've had to overcome to be where you are. So when people ask and people say, oh, you know, well, I'm humble. I think you're like the actual true definition as to what that word actually means. Because you could, you could take up most of the space in the room by just telling your story. And then the icing on the cake is, oh, well, I also you know, graduated from this university as well. And then the conversation's kind of done. Uh, I don't know how most people will respond. But the fact that you hold that energy with inside of you, knowing what it is that you've come from, that is inspiring within itself. I don't know what it is, but over the past five years, I've watched our, our Embrace video thousands of times just so I can remember where I've come from. And sitting down with you guys today, this is probably one of the most humbling times I've ever had in my life because I was 45 minutes of your life five years ago. And watching you guys come back Five years later, I can't help but to have some joy in my heart, to be a part of like something so great by watching you flourish. So I guess the question that I want to ask you is, is what is Embrace, what did this project mean to you? I think back when we first did the project, um, I had met like so many different people who like shared similar stories with me. And to me, it meant like, you know, we should be like, we can do it. Right. It was like a, a pat on the back. Like we can like embrace all of our struggles. Um, we can embrace all of the good parts of us to, and like whatever is waiting um, ahead for us, we can we can do it, whatever we want. I think now it means like a, it's like more of like a comforting hug 
uh it's like a yeah you did it it's not over yet by you know by far but um it's like a like a, you've been doing such a great job yeah. keep going you know uh yeah i think in general terms that's that's the way i'm understanding it do you excuse me have you rewatched the video that was created actually a few like a a few weeks before graduation uh, I was wearing my uh, Embrace Your Punch hat. <laughs> and uh, a few of my peers were asking, you know, what is that? What is that from? Um, and I, I had to explain to them. And they were like, oh, like, we must see this video now. And I'm like, oh, you guys don't, like, you don't, you don't want to do that. And then they're like, no, 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 we have to. And so I pulled it up. And it was kind of like, I had not seen it, like, until then. So I watched it with them. And so... It was very interesting, like, the reactions that I got. Um, and, like, at the same time, I was, like, remembering, you know, like, how I felt and what, it, like, you know, the kind of the, the place that I was at during that time. Um, and I'm like, wow, like, that was, like, not too long ago, but also, like, it feels like forever ago. Right. And at the same time, my peers were like, we didn't know. Like, we didn't know you, you know, you came from this background. And I was like, well, yeah. Uh, and, like, these were some of the people who, you know, I interacted with and they help shape who I am today. And so I did watch it, uh, you know, just by chance, like a, a month ago or so. Um, and it was very, like, I had to, like, take a step back and just, like, think and let it sink for a minute. You played a very important role in that video because a lot of people were speaking from experiences that were a challenge, a very, very big challenge for even adults at your guys' age. And just like now, your demeanor never changed. Your attitude never changed. Your outlook and the way that you articulated things, it never changed. So there was something about you five years ago that I looked at and was like, I wonder what she's going to do with life. I wonder what she's going to do. Not what life is going to do to you, but what you were going to do to life. That was the thought process that I was having because it doesn't take long to even have a 30-second conversation with you to know that, like, you're going to be okay. And there's, like, this, um, this nest of comfort with talking to you that... It slows down my heart rate where I feel, feel settled and I feel comfortable and I feel that it's okay to be vulnerable. Earlier I asked if, uh, if you've looked in the mirror, you've told yourself that you're proud. You thought about it. I do want to tell you this. Things to be proud of. Going to college just within itself graduating college within itself, going to an Ivy League college. If there were something to be celebrated today, tomorrow, the next day, and the year after, and the year after that, it's the fact that you committed to something for four years, despite how complicated and difficult midterms were, how hard finals were, how much of a challenge it was when you were homesick and you just wanted to be home. You committed to something for four years of your life and didn't turn your back on it once. That is not the norm for most people. If you were anyone else, I would say, Sonia, I'm sorry that you can't find a job. But I'm going to say this respectfully. I'm not. Sorry at all. Because I want you to be in the best situation you could possibly be in because you've worked your butt off to get there. Everything that's happened to you in life has not been by chance. You are literally self-made. And I think that you should recognize that and you should acknowledge it. You got into where you are because before, humbly, you were like, you know, I was just here for the ride. No, no, no. No, no, we can all take the ride, but there's actually 
processes and steps and sacrifice that go along with that ride. You may have just lived through those moments and saw it for what it was, but, and you may not think that it's pivotal to talk about it now, but the people that are watching this podcast, they need to understand what that looks like. The first person in your entire family to go to college, you weren't here for the ride. You were in the driver's seat and people were just coming in and putting gas in your car being like, hey, let, let us just help a tiny bit. Because what the reality of it is, is like everybody in this room, you've managed to touch all of us. We were all here for the ride. We were for the ride. Does that make sense? Don't lose sight of what it is that you've had to do to get to where you are. And don't let anyone discredit anything that you got going on. You don't have to be the, the loudest voice in the room. Frankly, the person that's the most quiet is always the most interesting, right? And I love that about you. I love that about your personality. I'm extremely excited to see what, this, what these next few years are going to offer you. And I challenge you every single day, at least for the next week, if you can, to look in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm proud of you. And don't get distracted by anything else. Look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that I'm proud of you. Because you deserve it. I am so proud at the fact that I'm sitting across from an Ivy League grad, given the fact of where you were five years ago. And to do this all in four years is remarkable. It is truly just an honor to sit across from you and have this conversation. And I love the fact that we're doing it and it's come back full circle. I can't say it enough, but I feel like just looking at you, I can see that this destiny that you're after, you're going to hit this with the hardest punch that it's ever felt. And whatever you choose to do with your degree, I think you're going to be a complete force to be reckoned with. And you should love that. That's oh, really kind of you. Thank you. The thing is, is like, people are going to tell you all these things that, that, that make them feel good. I always knew you were going to do it, right? Like, no, that, it's not a surprise. You've always been bright. I think you're going to hear that often. And not to take away any of that, but it was you the whole time, up late at night, studying. Weekends, sacrifice, because you wanted to make sure that whatever it is that you were going to do was secured. And I think that you should acknowledge that. Yeah, when people tell you, like, it'll be okay. It won't be okay if I don't try to make it okay. Right. And a lot of times that's not something that's visible to everyone else. Um, but yeah. I rewatched the video on the plane because I wanted to understand what it meant to have a conversation again with someone from five years ago. And I had all these like points that I wanted to bring up, but sitting in front of you, I feel like it just wouldn't do what I wanted it to do. So I'm going to ask you a very interesting question. You went to this university for four years. You lived in New York City out of all the places in the world to live. The hustle and bustle. Are you from a big city? What was it like to maneuver a, a city by yourself when you're not from a big city itself? What was that experience like for you? Like, what, what was that like? It was scary, but it was also very exciting. Um, 
yeah i'm not from a big city at all uh like i was born in a little village with like like sand not like like roads like uh so that was it's very different um and then here i've grown up in the suburbs um and then going into new york i thought it would be oh like you know i've been to chicago i'm around chicago no it's completely different um and but i think it's it's really exciting uh above all it's challenging you have to learn you know public transportation you have to like be on the lookout at all times you have to if you have to you have to carry pepper spray all the time um and you know it's 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 dangerous um you have to learn like where the good spots are uh but at the same time it's um it's very exciting because there's a lot of people like on those same sidewalks and you can overhear their conversations and they're all leading just very interesting lives and um there's a lot of like different things going in New York. There's a lot of people looking for, like you said, it's the hustle and the bustle. So people are are determined. So I feel like while I was very far away from home, I felt like sort of at home because I was around people who were um, who were sprinting to to do something. For sure. What would be a piece of advice for someone that's growing up the way that you've grown up? and want to achieve the level of success that you currently are achieving, what would you tell them? Ooh, uh, <laughs> that's a hard question. Um, I think the number one advice is to, um, like, hang on. Uh, there's a lot of times when you can just make the choice of, like, giving up, or you can... Um, you might get lost in like what you're trying to do. Uh, it might take years to accomplish what you're trying to do, but um, it's really important to like hang on to whatever your beliefs are, hang on to whatever you want to achieve when it gets tough. And there's like a lot of steps that you have to complete in between. Um, just hang on and just like take the next step. Yeah. Um, because if, you know, if you never take the first step, then you, you can't get there. And if you don't take the next step, you still can't get there. So everything is just made of like little steps you have to take. Um, so if you just hang on and just keep going, um, I think it'll work out. This is going to be a weird ask. But I would love for you to look into the camera maybe this one right over my shoulder and say something to your future self. So uh, future Sonia, I hope that you're, you make choices that you're proud of or you can be proud of. And I hope you never forget to look back every once in a while. and remember where you came from and just do your best. Hang on one step at a time. And you got this. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Right. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Embracing the Journey podcast is thriving. We are here. We're trying to put this message out there. I'm so happy that I was able to connect with these, uh, with these individuals and they're onto some great things. So I want to thank you guys again for tuning in and we'll see you soon.